I'm very interested in why good people do bad things. That's something that I keep coming back to in my work. Um, and when I was working very sh for a short time for a woman's magazine, I did a, a story on a, a tragedy that happened to a family. And um, I guess the power of, of that tragedy really affected me and I wanted to make a film about it. Right. Um, at the heart of the film, though, is the importance of family, whether good or bad. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's very much um, a, a tight, loving family in this film, and that, in some ways, is um, why it can be so disturbing, because these, these, this loving couple, they fell in love, they had a beautiful child together, and yet they do something in the film that most parents, I think, would find unthinkable, monstrous. Right, right. Mm. Wow. That is, that's... that's um, kind of interesting how you kind of de delved into that, that second part of the film. Yeah, exactly. And um, it's, I don't want to sort of give the surprise away. And I was so satisfying when we had the world premiere, sitting with the audience for the first time. It was the first time I'd seen the movie with an audience. And when the penny dropped about what was really going on, the secret in the film, I heard people gasp. And the woman right next to me went, Oh no! Right. And I thought, great, you know, we've, we've got them, we've grabbed them. Right. Well, it's kind of interesting. I mean, you're from New Zealand, mm. right? That's that's right. You know, like our fantastic director uh, Peter Jackson. Oh well, yeah, he's like you know <laughs> way up there. But actually, we were incredibly lucky with the film because um, Peter Jackson's post-production house, Park Road Post, they sponsored the post for us. So they came in and waved this magic wand over our visuals, and I think you know the film looks so much more stunning because of that, so we're very grateful to them. Wow, um, and just like Peter Jackson, I mean, you know, if you've seen this movie, Heavenly Creatures, that's yes. also the dark side of the human side. <laughs> yeah, that's so right, Manny, and yet it's also really beautiful, and I think, you know, the juxtaposition of the beauty with the dark is something that definitely fascinates me as a filmmaker. What are they feeding you guys in New Zealand? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe we're eating too much sheep and lamb. Yeah, 30 sheep for every one New Zealander, I think it is. Right. No, I heard that um, the film Everything We Love is financed by, is it partly financed by the government? But yeah, the New Zealand Film Commission. Okay, so this is this is kind of interesting. Um, they ran, it was like a New Zealand filmmaking idol competition. And um, they put a call out for entries, they had hundreds of teams, and they kind of narrowed us, us down. So it was quite a strange way to fund a film. Right. Um, but that's that's how we got our break. We basically won a competition. Wow. Um, put on by the New Zealand Film Commission, which is funded by the government. How was the whole experience? Tell us, tell us the, the, you know, the, the drama, the, the, the bad things about it. Okay, yeah, so, the, so, so the, the, the drama, I guess, is um, developing a film in a very competitive environment. I mean, normally you develop an idea, and at a certain point when it's ready and ripe, then you, you take it out. Um, but this was you know, right from the start. We were you know, working with the other teams that we knew were sort of vying for those funds as well. So, so that was that was hard. You know, and I guess that's maybe a good introduction to the industry, where your friends are also your competitors. Right. Yeah. What about the joys of making everything we love? Oh, the joys of making everything we loved. Um, being here at, at Palm Springs has got to be one of the most incredible joys because um, for a little film, to, you know, my first film. Um, to, to make it this far it was incredible. And that moment of sitting with the audience, experiencing it with an audience for the first time, um, I, when the hair stood on end, yeah, yeah, it was incredible. Yeah. How was the whole experience in Palm Springs so far? What do you think of our city? Palm Springs is, is unreal. I mean, we're, we're driving to this place through the desert, and then suddenly this oasis appears. You, you know in films when someone's sort of, you know, feeling a bit heat stroke or something like that, and they look up from, you know, and, and see this, this beautiful oasis, and it's like that. And the, the film festival, everyone has been so generous, so helpful, you know, made so much time for us, made us feel incredibly welcome. And that combined with the star power is just an irresistible, sorry, that combined with the star power is an irresistible combination to have, you know, these industry giants here and yet, you know, all these people helping you. I mean, I'm a complete unknown and, yeah, we appreciate it so much. Oh, you will not be unknown for a very long time. <laughs> um, what's, what's, what's next for everything we love? Okay, well, we've just had our world premiere. Um, you know, we would love American distribution and that, that, in fact, is one of the prizes. It's in competition. We're part of the, the New Director's New Visions and I think there's about 16 other filmmakers. So what a wonderful prize to win for, for a first film. Um, and then, you know, hopefully we'll be invited to other festivals. Um, the, I guess the big thing personally for me that's ahead for everything we loved 
is our New Zealand premiere. We haven't even shown this film to our families, our friends, um, our incredible actors, um, Brett Sear and five-year-old Ben. Um, they're all dying to see it with an audience as well. And um, in July, that'll finally happen in New Zealand. Wow. Yes, it's, it's showing in New Zealand as well, right? Yes, that's right, about mid-July. About mid-July. Mm. What's next for you? For me, well, one of the best things to come out of making this film was my collaborative relationship with my producer, Tom Hearn. He's an incredible man. He's so young. He's told me not to tell anyone his age. In fact, he grows like a beard to try and make himself look a bit older. And you know, we're developing a, a couple of projects, and one of them is set you know, in the United States. Another one is a co-production between Germany and New Zealand. So, you know, um, I guess you'd say the next stage is an international one for us. Oh, now is everything we love in competition in Palm Springs? It is in competition, yeah. So, uh, fingers crossed. Right? When will you know? I, I don't actually know how it works. This has been my f first film festival. I imagine that at the end of the festival, um, the awards are announced. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's a whole other ball game I'm yet to experience. Oh, good luck. And that, do you want to add anything else? Anything else? I guess I would like to talk a little bit about um, Ben. Um, oh, I was yes, a first so time director. Yeah. yeah. So I was a first time director, and you know, the, one of the stars in this film is a is a little boy. Yeah, and he's played by a five year old with, with no acting experience. Um, not many five year olds do have acting experience, and you know that was um, both hair raising and, and you know an, an incredible experience. Yeah, he was so focused, and you know he gave he held his own as a child actor with his adults. Yeah. I'm so proud of him. And I'm, yeah, my my actress, Sia Trockenheim, my leading man, um, Brett Stewart, they did an amazing job and went way outside their comfort zone. Yeah, well, you know, one of the Hollywood rules is that, you know, not to direct kids. Where were you? Animals. Where were you to tell me this, Manny? I needed you to, like, pop out and sort of just knock me on the head and say, what are you doing? This is crazy. Right? But, well, but I'm sure there's not a whole lot of problem with uh, Ben, though, right? Well, this is the thing. When we were planning for the film, we were so worried about you know what happens if he gets up one day and, and says I don't want to come to work anymore. You know what if he has a tantrum? Um, and I, I swear there was not a single tantrum on set. And um, it meant I was up to a, sort of 4 a.m. one night making these really elaborate um, sort of car star charts. Yeah. I think you've got them in the states, like the sort of incentive charts. And yeah. every time he did a take. He got to press a green button on set and that would make the number go up and that corresponded to the number of stars. He was very methodical in the way he thought this, this child. And you know, he slowly collected up his stars and at the, when he got a full star chart, he got awarded a hero Lego factory and we sort of held him aloft and the whole cast and crew applauded for him to really make him feel part of their family. So I say that Ben uh, did it for the Lego. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about the cast? How, how did you pick those, the cast? Okay. The other cast? Yeah, so I mean, the, the incredible thing about Sia Trockenheim was that she was eight months pregnant when she auditioned. Um, but you know, straight away there was something incredible about that. And we realized um, that she would be shooting about two months after having her first child. So that was something that we needed to you know, talk to her very carefully about. It's her first child, it's my first movie. You know, the risks, the stakes were very high. And yet, in the film, it's that maternal longing for her baby, which wasn't on set, which Sia channeled into her performance, and I, I think it's what makes it so compelling. You know, those are a mother's you know, real yearning, aching emotions, and she really harnessed them. Right.